Welcome back to another Beans Bags and Honeycrafts Company's tutorial. Today we are making this bag. This is the Gabriella bag by Shambhala Designs. This was in the Alpha Pack. Um, so this one, if you have the Alpha Pack, of course you have the pattern already. Otherwise I believe it will be coming uh, on the website to go public to everybody in let's see, April, May, June. I want to say end of July, beginning of August. Don't quote me on that. Uh, maybe uh, stay tuned to uh, the Shambhala Beggs uh, Facebook page to see when that one is coming out. But this was the one uh, that was being requested to be made, so I gave it a go. Let me give, show you what has, oh, oh my goodness. Um, this one is closed with a thumb lock. You could easily change it to a magnetic snap or a turn lock. Um, it's a squishy bag, but it has structured sides has an adjustable shoulder strap and on the inside it has a zipper pocket so it's it's a medium sized bag it's super cute um, I love it in the Mora for leather so this is a mixture of uh, Mora for leather which I got from LA bags and cork fabric that I got from MM cork supply so I hope you guys all enjoy this tutorial we'll see you on the other side bye okay so let's show you everything you are going to need um, to cut out and the hardware you're going to need to make this wonderful Gabriella bag. Um, a few modifications that I am doing mainly because I don't have the right size hardware for some of it is I'm doing my shoulder strap as a one inch strap rather than a three quarter inch strap I think it is in the pattern and I don't have the little uh, strap connectors for the side so I'm either going to do I think I'm going to do hidden connectors there. So I cut um, two strap connector pieces just two by five inches um, to be able to do those hidden connectors and I'm not my strap is not going to be detachable so I'm going to attach it straight too so I added in two strap ends for that and um, of course the two rectangular rings for the uh, hidden connectors. All right so seeing as we're talking hardware let's talk about what we need. So you are going to need a thumb lock I just get mine from Emmeline bags, so I got a thumb lock. Um, as I said, the two rectangular rings, if you're doing the connectors like I am, I won't show them in the video. You can see my hidden connectors in my Bag Makers 101 playlist if you wanted to check those out. Uh, you're going to need a slider for the adjustable strap, uh, a zipper pull, and a zipper for the um, interior zipper pocket so I'm going to use a number five zipper and again two strap ends um, which again I get at Emmeline and this is just because I'm doing that strap a little bit different um, I always have cut up pieces of Decaval Heavy or, or Peltex and this is to put in behind rivets just to give a little bit more stability in behind those or magnetic snaps so you may see me pull these out and do whatever with them and of course you will need your nameplate or handmade tag as well so yes, very minimal hardware, which is awesome. Less hardware, the better it is. Pieces even, there wasn't that many to cut out. So I'm doing mine. Um, the main fabric is going to be out of uh, the grape colored Mora faux leather from Emmeline Bags. Um, my front flap I'm doing in cork. So my cork, again, I get from MM Cork Supply. So I'm using this is the front and then I'm using a piece of eggplant cork for the back. As well as cork I am using for my accent strip. Where are you? Oh, we'll get to it when we get to it. Okay, so you're going to need your two pieces for your uh, flat panel. Cut them in a way. I'm using the uh, cork, so I'm not going to be sewing them together. I'm going to glue them together and then sew around so I won't have to turn them. Um, yeah, you need your strap. Again, here's my two strap connectors because I'm going to do the hidden straps on the side. Uh, two interior zip pocket pieces. Um, I'm going to be doing my interior zipper uh, with my overlay method, uh, not necessarily uh, what she's doing in the pattern. But uh, yeah, you could see my many zipper methods uh, in my Bag Makers 101 playlist as well. But that's what I've chosen to do for that. Um, you're going to need two main exterior pieces and two lining pieces all the cotton if you're using a woven like I am I have back with SF 101 again if you need SF 101 I do have some for sale on my website you can grab it there as well as Decaville light and Decaville heavy 
Um, you're going to need a piece, if you're doing the piping, this will be to make my own piping as well as a piece of piping cording, which I haven't cut yet. You're gonna need your two to bottom pieces, your bottom lining and your bottom exterior. Um, I did something a little different with this is I just put a, a piece of Decaville Heavy within the seam allowances as well, just to give my bottom a little bit uh, more structure. Here's my contrast band. And my contrast band I'm just doing in the eggplant cork. And then last but not least, your four gusset pieces, your two lining pieces and your two exterior pieces. So really very minimal cutting here, um, which is fantastic. And I think it's gonna be an absolutely beautiful bag. So uh, let's get to it and get this bag made. All right, so we're gonna go a little bit off the beaten path here, mainly because I want to get my flap edge painted so it's ready to go by the time we're ready for this. So if you go to step 13, it's telling you how to make your flap. If you're doing it in woven, you're going to have cut these out on the dotted line, and then you're going to sew around the edges with the right sides together, with a quarter inch seam allowance, and then turn them out. I also forgot to mention, I put a little bit of deck of light on the back side of my cork too, just to give it a little bit more uh, thickness as well. Um, anyways, you're using woven, you're gonna put the right sides together, you're going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, turn it out, and then press it, and then top stitch all along that edge. I am not using woven, I'm using cork, so I cut along the solid line. So I'll show you what we're gonna do with those. I'm just gonna move my camera down, all right. So we want to put them wrong sides together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of my tape to stick them together within the seam allowances, especially if you have a domestic machine because uh, your machine may not like the double-sided tape. My machine goes through everything because I am using an industrial. So yay me. <laughs> okay. Take off your tape. Again, the only reason I'm doing this right off the hop is because I'm gonna be edge painting these and I want it to be dry for the time that um, I'm ready for them. Okay, and then you wanna put them wrong sides together as even as you can against that tape. Okay, so I got a little bit of overhang of eggplant on the other side, but that's okay because we can trim that uh, back as we go. So what I'm going to do now that I have that all stuck together is I'm going to take this to the uh, sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch all the way around with a quarter inch uh, seam allowance. And then I'm going to trim these edges down to an eighth of an inch away from the stip stitching. Um, after I've done that, I'm going to actually take this to my painting station and I'm going to start edge painting all my edges here. Um, I'm not going to show you how I do my edge painting. I do have a tutorial on my Bag Makers 101 playlist showing how to edge paint. I just really need to get that going because the edge paint can take about an hour and a half to two hours to do and dry. So I want to make sure that I get that done before I'm needed to put it on the bag. Um, another thing I'm going to do is the contrast band because I'm doing it in cork. Um, so on the original pattern piece, they were I think a quarter inch wider on each side. And what that was for was you would, if you're using like a faux leather or a cotton, you would have taken and folded the edges in like this or taped them down like that before you put them on and then you would have top stitched them onto the bag. I'm gonna leave my edges raw. Again, I'm going to go and I'm going to edge paint the, this one as well. So um, yeah, I'm just uh, jumping ahead. I know we're gonna need this piece almost right away. So I just wanna make sure that I get it done so it's dry for when we start doing the uh, exterior of the bag. I think we are probably gonna start with the lining of the bag because I am gonna to have to wait for these 
to dry. Um, another thing I'm going to do off camera is assemble my shoulder strap. It is done just like any other crossbody strap. Again, if you need um, a tutorial on that, I do have it in my Bag Makers 101 playlist and on how to make a crossbody strap. The same thing with this one. I will put all of these links to the, the sub tutorials down in the description below. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to do my flap and I'm going to do and I'm going to edge paint my flap and my uh, contrast piece for the front as well as make my uh, my shoulder strap. Once I'm done all that we'll come back and I'll show you what we're going to do next. All right so I have my flap done. I have it all edge coated nicely and nice and shiny because I love a glossy finish. So that's both sides there and you can see the top stitching that I did all along. So this piece you can put aside for now. Next thing we're going to do is you're going to want your main body piece and your accent piece. You want to find the center point of both of them, which I've already done on both ends, but all you do is fold it in half and do a little snip or a mark where that center is. And I've already done that on the bottom as well. Now, again, follow the pattern. I decided to use, just leave my edges raw because I edge coated them. So it gives this rubbery type um, edge on them. Um, so all I did was cut that quarter inch off of the, the pattern piece because uh, I wasn't going to be folding in the edges. If you're following the pattern, again, you would have folded in your edges like this and taped them down, but I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay, so you're going to take your double-sided tape and you're going to take your little V's here and your V at the bottom and match it up so you know it's nice and center and then match up that top one as well and that should make it pretty near center and stick it down. Make sure you keep the tape outside of your seam allowance, especially if you're on a domestic machine. So that's stuck on there. So we're gonna end up taking this to the sewing machine and I'm a little uneven. Let's try that again. Okay, my piece is a little longer than the other. Okay, there we go. Um, at the same time, I am going to mark my pleat marks on and do my pleats at the same time. So what I like to do is I like to cut into where the pleats are, little dashes. You lay down your pattern piece and you mark where those pleats are. Do the same on the other side, just flip it over and mark your pleats. And the way you make the pleats, I'm just going to double check here, yeah, is, so those two lines right there, we're going to bring them together to the line so that middle line is up on the fold there. And then we are going to fold it, make sure I'm folding it the right way. Yes, so you're doing your pleats, you're marking the two outside lines, you're putting them together. And then you have this up and then you're going to fold it upon itself. So the pleat is going into the center of the bag on the exterior and on the exterior, it looks like it's folded out and put a clip on it there. Do the same with this other one. So put your two lines together like this and then fold it upon itself into the center and clip it. So it looks like that. That doesn't seem right to me. I marked my lines wrong, that is why. My marks are just slightly off, that's why it, it shouldn't pleat into that center part there. <laughs> okay, let's try this again them together, push into the center, that's better. So it should be away from the center panel a little bit. Like that, put the lines together, push it into the center, there we go. So that's one side and then you want to do the other side as well. Two 
two lines into the center and clip. So it'll be just like that. So what you're going to want to do is top stitch along here and here on each side and then baste these pleats into place. It actually might be easier. I should have done it like this. First do these and then do the center pleats. At the same time, mark your pleats on the back main panel and baste those into place. I'm going to go ahead and do that and when we come back we will move on to the next step. Okay, so this is what all the pieces look like with the pleating done. Now, I actually had to go double check because it's very odd that we do not have foam on the back of these pieces, but no, the pattern only calls for foam for on the gusset. So this is correct. Um, I guess we'll see how it goes. I think I might have done foam, but it is supposed to be more of a soft looking bag. So we will see how it goes. Okay, so now that we have that, now we're to the point where we want to put on the piping if you are doing piping. Again, I made my own piping. Um, if you want to learn how to do that, I do have the, the tutorial in my Bag Makers 101 playlist that you can uh, refer to to make your own piping, or you can buy store bought piping, or you can leave the piping off. It's completely up to you. So what you want to do is on the pattern piece, there is a mark to where the piping is to start, which is one inch from the top. So I'm actually just going to mark it this way. Where's my chalk? There it is. Like so. And then one inch on the other side as well. And just like all the other Shambhala bags, the piping goes on the same way. So you're going to line it, the piping up with that mark. Again, mine kind of goes over, so I'll cut this off here. Line it up at that mark there. And clip it on. All the way around. If, if you're feeling confident with yourself, you don't need to clip it. I always clip it because I always want things to be exactly where they need to be. When I come to the corner, this isn't going to want to turn all the way, so I am going to just, in within this uh, seam allowance of the piping, put a few small, si uh, blah, 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 few small snips, say that ten times fast, <laughs> to help ease it around the corner. See how the snips help with that?
Again, you can see how that corner is not wanting to go around, so do a few small snips there. Just help ease it around. And I may not have cut my piping long enough. We'll find out here. may have to distribute. Usually I cut mine a little bit longer and it helps, but I didn't this time. There we go. Okay, and then what we want to do is where we started here, you just want to take the clip off and you want to slide it so it's just going to go off like that and clip that in place. And same with the other side. So you're just easing it off like that. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the machine, have your zipper foot on, and we're going to baste the piping on. So you're going to start up here, come down, and you're going to stay at about, I'm actually going to follow my piping stitching on here. So you're going to come down, following about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Keep coming, following the outline of the bag, not of the piping, because we've got the piping veered off. It's going to come over top of this, and then you're going to follow the line of the piping all the way around until you get to this side and again you're going to go up and then it's going to come up and across keep following up this way and that's going to give us a nice finish to that piping so go ahead and do that with both panels and then we'll come back and we will work on the gusset all right so we got the piping on you can see how it kind of veered off on each side which is what we wanted and on this side as well you can see better here when i said veered off to that quarter of an inch. So that's all done. Our next step is to install the female portion of our thumb lock. Now everybody's thumb locks are going to be different, so I'm not gonna show how I do this. I will show how I make my placement though. So it's gonna go on the front panel. So flip your front panel over to the back. And on the pattern piece, you're gonna see it says thumb lock female right here. So I don't cut this out or anything like that because all thumb locks are a different size. All I'm gonna do is lay this up against with my centers like that, where it was before. And I'm gonna take a pen and right where this thumb lock box is, if you can see, I'm just gonna put, make sure I'm on my center lines, a dot right in the middle of that. You can see it right there. And what I'm gonna do with that is my female piece, the center of it is marked by the little dot there. So I'm gonna be laying that out and figure out where my prongs are gonna go through and then installing it similar to a magnetic snap. Um, the other thing I am going to do is also um, put some Decaville Heavy behind it um, to, for the prongs to go through so it has a little bit more uh, stability behind the fabric just because this isn't interfaced at all. So yeah, just use a little scrap of Peltex or Decaville Heavy for that. And yeah, so go ahead and install it and then I'm gonna take you over to the machine for the rest of the bag. All right, I lied. Before we head over to the machine, 
there it is all installed. Um, you can see underneath I put some Decaville Heavy under there so the prongs go through it. And then I just put some duct tape to help uh, protect the lining fabric for it. So that's what that looks like. So thumb locks aren't my most favorite thing, especially installing the other part. I'm sure I'll struggle with that. But uh, yeah, so make sure you have it the right way because I just had to redo it because I put it on upside down. But that's all right. So you can put those aside. Next step is these are the only pieces that have foam. The uh, bottom and the two gusset pieces. So you're going to go and you're going to base the foam on. Um, mine isn't kept out of the seam allowance because I have sew-in foam. Uh, if you have fusible foam, feel free to cut it out of the seam allowance. My machine can handle it, so it's okay. My Juki 2010Q could handle it as well. So I think it all depends on uh, what kind of machine you have. So baste the foam onto these three pieces. And then what you're going to do is, if you got the magnetic connectors like um, in the pattern, that's when you would install them now. And you would just look at your pattern piece and see where the connector was there, put it down here, make your mark and install it there. I don't have metal connectors, so I'm going to do uh, my um, invisible connectors or my hidden connectors. Um, I'm not going to show how to do that here. If you want to know how to do that, again, I have it in my bag makers, uh, my bag makers 101 playlist. Um, to show how to do that and I will put that link down in the description for you as well. So go ahead and do that, base those together, put on your connectors and then what you're going to do is those finished pieces you're going to make your gussets. You're going to take the long side, you're going to sew this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, open it up, push towards the bottom seam, the seam and top stitch here and then do the same on the other side just like with any other Shambhala pattern making the gusset. So go ahead, build your gusset, we'll come back and we will be at the machine at that point and I will show you how we're going to put uh, the gusset onto the exterior panels. Okay, so I lied to you again. We're not quite going to the machine yet. Um, okay, so I have installed my invisible or hidden strap connectors here. This is where you would also have installed your um, metal connectors if you had them. So you can set that aside for now. Now what we want to do is we want to put our flap onto our back panel. So the way we are going to do that is we want to find our center. So I always mean to mark all my centers and I always forget. But I'm not going to clip it on this one. So what we want to do is we want to place this two inches down from the top of the panel. So I'm actually going to take my chalk, make sure it's straight, two inches. And then we want to place it wrong side and right side together. So the wrong side, or both right sides are up. And we want this to be pretty centered. I'm actually going to use a little bit of double sided tape, just like a quarter inch size here, to help me hold this in place. Because I can't pin it because I'm using vinyl and cork. So I'm just going to take about and put it all along the bottom here on the wrong side of the flap. So if we could go like this, this is 9.75. Right. That's not going to help me. Take the tape off. Come on. And we want to stick it along that two inch line somewhat centered. So what I'm going to do is make sure these are the same size on either side. This one seems to move over a little bit. I 
I think that will be it. So what I mean is by these, this part that's hanging over. So I'll just make sure from here to here, it's half an inch. And from here to here, oh, I did really good. So it looks something like that. So next, what you want to do, um, you want to top stitch along this flap here at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which will be just parallel to this line here. And then what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to put a rivet in this corner and a rivet in this corner. And I might actually put one in the middle just to make it a little bit more stable, um, backing it, the rivets, with a piece of decable heavy. So go ahead and do that. So stitch that with a quarter inch top stitch and then apply rivets if you like. And then we will be headed over to the machine, I promise this time. All right, we're going to attempt to power through this. Make sure I'm plugged in everywhere. I've only got like 20% left on my phone, so we're gonna try to get through it as fast as we can. So there we go. I've riveted it on like so. Okay, so now what we wanna do is, oops, we wanna take our gusset piece and find the bottom center, so match up those seams. And like I say, do little small clips. About an eighth of an inch or so. And we should have our center marked on the other one. Of course I do not, so I will mark it now. Okay, so right sides together. You wanna go through, match up that center. Guess it. And it's a little hard to see at my machine. That's why I try to do most of the work at the table, but I know lots like lots of you like to see me actually sew this part. So I'm trying to accommodate everybody. But my room is like super small, so it's really, really hard to get a camera in here with the machine and everything. So um, it is a lot easier for me just to show outside of the outside of here. Okay, so I usually pin the center and then I pin up here. You want to make sure that that piping is still going outwards. Match up the end here. We're going to be sewing this with the main panel on the bed of the machine. That's the easiest way to do it. I do have my zipper foot on here because we are sewing along piping. which actually, hmm, I actually want to follow that piping. I'm going to go against what I just said. We are going to sew with the gusset side down because I want to follow that piping line to make sure I don't run over my piping. So I'm going to be stitching over the piping stitching. So just have to be careful that the gusset doesn't get all bunched up underneath. Just feel the way around type thing. I don't think I have to do any snips with this one. It looks like it's going to fit in pretty good, which is a bonus. I like it when it goes down the curve naturally. Match up that top part of the gusset there. And make sure you're evenly distributing that fabric.
Okay. So yeah, this is going against how I usually do it, but I really want to follow on the main panel around the side where we have our stitching from when we attached our uh, piping. I really want to follow that line so I know we're not running over the piping. So I'm just going to have to keep my hand underneath, make sure my gusset is staying good and not um, getting in the way. I have my zipper foot on and we're going to sew around a quarter inch seam allowance following that line that we made with the piping. It just helps guarantee that you're not going over top of your piping, which we really don't want to do. It's really weird without uh, foam on this main part. I'm so used to the bag being a lot more standy uppy. <laughs> it looks like it'll get kind of have a, a soft texture on the outside, but have structure on the bottom and sides. Remember we do have pleats in there, so those aren't puckers, those are pleats that we created, so don't panic when you get to them. Oops, clips are flying everywhere. so bad. Okay, so once that's done, see how that looks there. Kind of pop it out, make sure if you didn't catch it, it actually ended up so good. So that's the back of the bag there, right there. So now we're going to do the same thing with the front panel. And stick it on this way, pin it, and again go around. So I'm going to go off camera to do that and do a quick charge on my phone. And then um, we'll come back and we will put the lining together. Okay, so now that we have the exterior done, we're in the home stretch here. This is, the lining is almost exactly like the exterior, except for we don't have the flap and we don't have the accent piece on it. So you wanna take your, your two main lining panels, you have your bottom panel and your two gusset panels. You're going to assemble these exactly the same way as we did with the exterior pieces. So put your two gusset pieces onto your bottom piece do your uh, pleats on both of these pieces, and I've already done this, but go ahead and install your uh, zipper pocket. I chose this time to do my zipper pocket with the overlay, and of course, I'm gonna do my turning method where I keep the bottom of this open. Um, you can see this in my Bag Makers 101 playlist for my interior zipper pocket for easy bag turning, if you wanna do it this way, otherwise you can just do it through the bottom of the bag. We're gonna be leaving the bottom of the bag open anyways. It's just an extra step and I can show you what we do with that. So the only difference is when we are sewing the gusset on, you're gonna start with your quarter of an inch seam allowance near the top. But as you get down to the bottom, you're going to branch out into a half inch seam allowance all the way along the bottom, all the way up the side. And then when we get to about here, we wanna start branching back into a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And the reason that uh, that is done is uh, it will still fit through the top when we're putting the two uh, inner and the exterior together, 
but it makes it so the lining fits tighter in the bag so it's not going to be droopy and saggy. Um, on the panel that doesn't have your zipper pocket, when you put your gusset on, you're going to want to leave open about eight inches or so right here. Um, so you're going to sew a quarter of an inch, half inch here, stop here, back stitch, come here, start and back stitch again, half inch, work your way into a quarter inch, and we're going to leave that bottom through for our turning because we are going to turn the bag once we put it together through the bottom of the bag. And then with my method through the pocket, that's where we zip up or uh, not zip up, <laughs> zip up, um, sew up the bottom of the bag. So go ahead and do that. Make sure you do your pleats first and yeah, and then come back and we will end up putting the lining and the exterior together. We're so close to being done. All right, so we're still playing chicken with my iPhone battery, but we have the exterior done and pulled out. Look, look how cute it's gonna be. And we have our lining here. So now what we wanna do is we want to make sure we put our flap, push it down, because we don't want to sew the flap. So it's gotta make sure it's going down. And we want to put our exterior right sides together in our lining, um, figuring out where you want your zipper pocket to be. I like mine to be to the back of the bag. So we're gonna stuff it in like this. I'm just loving this Mora, the scrape Mora for leather from uh, M-Line Bags. It's so nice, so nice. Okay, so again, make sure that that flap is stuffed down. Match up your centers here from all of our notches. And on the front. It's not a very big opening, so it's gonna be a fast stitch and top stitch. And then um, once you have those centers matched up, oops. Then match up the side seams, either nesting them or opening them, whichever you wanna do, just to try to reduce some of that bulk there. I'm gonna nest mine. telling me my battery level is very 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 low again make sure it is stuck down into the bag the uh, flap okay and then we are going to stitch that around with a quarter of an inch seam allowance needle down whenever you have to adjust. It's a little awkward because it is such a small opening. Again, making sure that that flap is in. to make sure that everything was caught because I was sewing from the inside of the bag. I want to make sure everything was caught on the exterior. 
And it was, and now we get to birth it through the bottom. Which side is the flap on? Because it's lacking that interfacing in the main panels, it actually isn't that bad to birth. Be careful not to pull too hard on the flap. Just kind of, you don't want to rip it off. Stuff the lining into the bag. Oh my gosh, this is so adorable. Okay, so then what you're going to do next is I like to go through and kind of finger press all my seams. Like so. For our top stitch. So you can see here we're going to be top stitching. This is our flap. We're going to be making sure never to sew through the flap. But you're going to be top stitching along there underneath the flap almost. <clears throat> Oopsies. Sorry about that. Yeah, just press it all down. We're so close to being done. So I think I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to do a quick charge on my phone again because I really want to show you how I seal up the bottom. You all know how to do the top stitch. It's in all of my videos. Um, again, I will be doing it this way, down like this, all the way around that top edge. And when you get to the flap, make sure the flaps pull out of the way like this and it's down like this and the flaps up like this and you're going right along that edge there. So I'm gonna go do a power charge because I really wanna get this video up tonight. Um, so go ahead, top stitch your bag and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I seal it all up in the bottom. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I installed the front clasp and I attached my handles. You've probably done them with the uh, swivel class so you can do that now I just have to show you how to seal up the bottom with my way so your pocket that we left the opening in pull it out right out like this reach inside and grab the opening in the lining and pull it through the pocket like so and then match up the opening and we're just going to sew that shut. This is my preferred way of finishing a bag. I um, I can never make it look nice myself um, on the bottom by just turning it under and doing it. So this way it makes it so you have it seamless. And you get that little bit of an edge in the pocket, but do you know what? Nobody sees the bottom of the pocket, so I'm okay with that. So remember we're doing this one at a half inch seam allowance because it's the lining we're closing and just sew across. And then stuff it back in through the pocket. stuff make sure there's no holes there's not and then just seal up the hole in the bottom of the pocket and 
stuff the pocket back in. And we are completely done. So yeah, just go ahead, put uh, finish installing your thumb lock, put on your handles, and I'll show you the inside of this. There's our inside. And it's so cute. There we go. That's the Gabriella, the new Gabriella bag by Shambhala Designs. I hope everybody found this tutorial helpful and useful. Um, I really uh, do love making Shambhala bags. Uh, my goal uh, for Sammy is to get through her whole catalog and have tutorials for everything. Um, we have a brand new one coming out, I think, on June 25th. So keep an eye on my channel for that one. It is a lovely one. Can't wait to show it to you guys. Plus many more as I work through the tutorials this summer. Um, if you like this video, if you feel obliged, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you do like my channel, please subscribe and then you'll get and hit the bell notification and then you will know when I have new videos coming up. Anyways, thank you everybody. I will see you on the next.